So, how many of you gamers are out there? We're hoping to play PC games on the go through the Smock Zero that has essentially gone off the radar at this point. I know I was. It looks really interesting, and I hope they do come back onto the radar soon. But what we have left, or say, what we have to look forward to, is something that I happened upon today. While I was bored at work, I was going through Bing Technology News, and I happened upon a new device that's in development by the GPD developer. Have you ever heard of them? Well, if you haven't, head on over to gpd.hk. They're a Chinese developer who have been making Android gaming systems. Not a lot of success there, but they've been trying. So, they've got something new that they're developing. So, let's take a look. Okay, what is this that we've got in front of us? This is a prototype, design, screenshot, whatever you want to call it, of a Windows 10 handheld gaming system that GPD is working on developing. Now, I said Windows 10. That means that it is going to run Windows 10 Home Edition, which means PC games on the go, no Steam OS like the Smock Zero, Windows, boom, playing all Windows compatible games that the hardware can support. So, what are we actually looking at here? We've got a clamshell design similar to that of the Nintendo DS and the Nintendo 3DS. The shape of it really reminds me of the shape of smartphones, like the Android phones. So on the top, we've got the screen, which is supposed to be a 5.5 inch screen. We've got some good stats on the screen. It's supposed to have a 1280 by 720 resolution and is 5.5 inches. As far as screen size is concerned, that's a little bit bigger than the screen on the PlayStation Vita. On the bottom half, we've got a D-pad. We've got two analog sticks that look more like the analog nubs that came on the PSP. And then we've got four face buttons that look similar to the ones that you find on the Nintendo 3DS. Underneath it, you have a keyboard. That's a full keyboard. I see a full array QWERTY keyboard. I see everything on the left that's supposed to be there for keyboard. We got escape, tab, caps, shift, an FN key, control, alt, a Windows key, a space bar. The only thing that's missing here is a number pad. And then on the right we have what looks like a power button and a few other keys that might be the F keys. F1 through, well not F11 because it looks like there are only nine here. So F1 through F9. And then in this other screen we show that we have shoulder buttons. I see no indication that there are more than two shoulder buttons, so we're probably just looking at an L trigger and an R trigger, or whatever they want to call it on this, since this isn't really a Nintendo or PlayStation product. As far as the inner software-based hardware is concerned, our processor is an Intel Atom X5-7 8500 quad-core. This isn't an epic processor. An example of a device that uses this is the Asus 10.1 inch T100 transformer books. So we're looking at a base speed of about 1.4 gigahertz unless GPD has suddenly upgraded the chip to do much more. And we've got 4 gigabytes of onboard RAM memory. So with this in mind, we're not looking at super high-end new games like Fallout 4 or The Division, but we're looking more mid-tier games during the early days of the PlayStation 3, maybe. So, we're looking at games you can play like LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga, Tomb Raider Anniversary Legend and Underworld, Fallout New Vegas, Skyrim, Fallout 3. At the end of the day, it's not high-end PC gaming, but just think Fallout 3 and Skyrim on the go. As far as onboard memory to store games is concerned, we've got 64 gigabytes of flash memory, plus a micro SD card slot that supports up to the 128 gigabyte micro SD cards. They haven't said if it will support the 256 gigabyte ones yet, so I wouldn't really expect it to. For video output and audio output, we've got a micro HDMI, so it's a little different than the typical HDMI cables that you have for systems like the PlayStation 4 or the PSTV. Then for audio, we've got the micro HDMI, once again, and we also have a headphone jack. For connectivity, we have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth features, so it's possible that you might also be able to use Bluetooth for Bluetooth keyboards and Bluetooth mice, as well as headsets and speakers. 
then with USB, we've got two different types of USB on here. We've got one USB Type-C port, which is a little smaller than a normal USB. It's not like micro USB, but it's kind of middle ground between that and the USB 2.0 and 3.0. And then we've got one USB 3.0 host, which is a pretty big deal. The only other thing we have to say about the hardware is the battery life. The battery is supposed to be 6000 mAh, which is an estimated 6 to 8 hours of battery life when it's online. If it's not online, if you have airplane mode on, it might last 9 to 10 hours. That's a pretty good amount of time, especially considering this is a third-party system. So, there we go. Everyone, let me know your thoughts. I am actually looking forward to hearing more about this, and I'm also hoping that I can reach out to the developers to find out more information. 